Welcome, everybody. The experimental show is here. We got Zach on the camera, Chris in the background. I am your host, Michelle, along with Jacob Nordine. We had <laughs> the me. hats rolling today. Hats were on, jeans we were on. on. It was a chilly morning. What did you morning. say, Zach? It was 50 something? 50, yeah. 53 yeah. degrees. It's a good deal. Feels great in the shop here. But this is the experimental show, folks. So we're doing, this is number five. It's been five weeks since we started this. And we've got kale on the Marver here. So you don't know what that means, either do I. But we're gonna go experimental with it. And we're just going off of ideas we've had before this so that came from this show and or things that we sleep on and wake up and wanna do. You so sleep on glass? I don't sleep on any glass, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, folks. <sighs> It's You're always good. a play on words. I met with the accountant today and she says these words and they mean totally different things to me. Like partners, like partners in an accounting partner in the firm. And I thought it meant like boyfriend, girlfriend, like my partner. She's like, what are you saying? There you go. Sometimes words and different mediums are different things. That's right. We go through a lot of those on our Gathering Point show, the glass because blowing terminology. I know, no one knows what our terms mean. Yeah, for just a little bit of quick action, step over here and check this out. Chris is over here casting up puddles, folks. These are puddles out of copper blue that are going to have either Detroit or Michigan on the backside uh, coming through the optics of the glass looking really good. And we put them on a handmade metal stand, and those are a sweet way to represent Michigan. But that's not experimental. That's tried and true. That's just puddles. It's 20 just years bottles. ago, it was 20 years ago. Oh, so, so why don't you talk about what you're doing and I'll get some pipes up for the experiment du jour. All right, we like uh, really going into it pretty blind and we haven't really talked about what each other is really doing. So we're gonna, you're gonna see the communication between artists uh, to make a piece happen, happen. But she is gathering the pipes and she's gonna get ready for uh, what we need. I just need a, a big blow pipe and punny rods. Um, Big punny rod or just? Just them? small ones are fine. But let's go over here and just look at what has been done previously over the past five weeks and kind of what that means for our upcoming pieces. We've got a beautiful display of all our household items here on the table ready for the show. We love that. But this is what I see mom has gathered, Michelle has gathered, uh, for her design today. And I don't know exactly what it is, but this are the three, these are three pieces she picked out and laid here, so I gotta assume they're inspiration for this piece. I'm gonna bring back my piece that I created from last show and bring you folks over to our uh, suite. First of all, this is our annealer for, annealer reveal for Tuesday's show and Thursday's show. We're gonna do annealer reveals on Sundays to encapsulate both shows that we do. Tuesday, custom orders, Glass Academy, tried and true products, live glass blowing, cool stuff. That's this top one. And that's, I'm not gonna get into that so people can't get a sneak peek at what we made on Tuesday because it all turned out amazing. But the other side of the annealer will be our experimental show reveal. And this table is getting filled up throughout the weeks at this point. Things are coming along really cool. This was actually my piece from last week. And just a brief overview, Michelle's been working on these really cool feathers with candy cane. And we spoke a lot about cane up here and how it's made and how the designer's brain thinks about it and then finished product of all the different colors and different twists you can do and really the endless, never-ending uh, option of creativity when it comes to cane. So that's super cool. She's been working on feathers, did a little bit of different styling feathers over here and has made some really cool products. I discovered on my second, uh, on the second show, how to add these really cool uh, spherical orbs that kind of magnify the color behind the glass and can be used functionally, like this one, allows it to sit up at an angle so we can appreciate the piece. And throughout three or four shows, I've gone down the line and experimented with that and made uh, a couple different ones with some curls on them, really watery applications. And then uh, this guy was uh, a couple shows ago, which turned out super cool, this kind of spire of uh, magnification. I don't know what your angle looks like, but I see upside down the experimental show uh, sign through every single one of those spheres. 
So I, I definitely will be playing with that more. And that also has to do with the tree design I went with on the last oh, one. Oh, is that what was going on? That broke, but... I couldn't tell what you were saying broke. I went way too big with it, way too tall, it was too yeah. thin, and there was just way too much weight up here. I could have blew a bubble up here instead of a uh, solid piece, so it was top heavy. But So that broke, but still really cool and watery. Yeah, so I'm, I'm borrowing this to talk about when I do my piece. That's what I, I saw that over there as your inspiration. I want to change this yellow tablecloth. It makes everything way too bright and crazy. Yeah, it does. But that's for okay. sure. So that's what we've gone through so far, folks. And I'll let, are you going first today? Would you like me to go first? Yes. Follow me this way, everybody. Oh, yes. So do not look at your phone. We're not looking at comments. We're staying focused in the I moment. don't talk to anybody on this show, even though I want to. Okay, just checking. Let's hear what she's got in store for us, folks. So, you may or may not know, I usually drink green smoothies, and I need a new mug. I'm thinking I'm kind of, I usually have three or four. I rotate update. before. Yeah, I need to update. I like how it plays and picks up the green and the color, but that's that's my beverage to keep me rolling, and I'm sorry this piece of kale didn't get eaten. Let's get a nice zoom in right on that piece of kale, folks. This kale is from a biodynamic organic farm in New York. Ooh is working and she had sent me a picture one time of a bunch of kale in a bin. Lucy is my sister. My daughter, his sister. Um, and I, the kale, if you are a kale person, when water droplets land on it, they puddle up, very similar to this. So I just spent the week with Lucy and I just thought I'd send her a fun little, she's doing some cooking uh, for a group. She was hired as a chef. And so she doesn't know this, I don't think she's watching. But how we've been doing the feather, I'm gonna do a piece of kale, it's gonna have a wood base, and we're gonna do a couple water droplets on it. Cool. Yeah. So it's a mix of the feather, what Jake's been doing. Um, yes, so that's it. So I've got my colors here. Beautiful. And you can see there's like, you know, a touch of, of yellow in the leaves. I'm gonna do a base green with some lighter green over it and maybe a little yellow in it. The stem will be you do like- You know this is an opaque color. That's not so. new green, that's watermelon or? No. I that kind of looks like- Either way, it'll I be I wonder fine. if somebody mixed up our greens. Looks like a mix of two. Okay, so the feather, how I was doing the piece of cane, that's heating up. Oh no. Uh-oh. So Someone's in I trouble. want to come this way. So this is all like really nice wood. These are um, bases that we use for awards or Chris will do in some of his pieces. This wood up here I'm saving for the base of some of the flowers. But I just went out of town. Hang on. And I wanted to have the base be a piece of wood where Lucy was from so that it was more natural looking and not so like clean and pressed. So this was an, um, a building that was tore down. I was really looking at the wood. Uh, this piece I like how it curves. And so I'll probably cut a square section out of here. Maybe stain it a little, not sure. But I gave myself some choices. This one I really like, but you can see how much it's coming apart. So I was hoping to get this knot. What is going on over here? I know, it's not gonna work. Oh. What I Watch thought maybe out. I could cut and then put it on a piece of metal and put some glue on there to keep it all together. But I, I think it's too crumbly. As it dried out, it feels too crumbly. Dang. Thanks for that thumbs down. <laughs> I do have this one. There's a little more solid edge. So this was um, a factory in the town where Lucy is that's no longer in operation, probably be one day refurnished as an event space because it's got all the super cool brick. And then this was another piece from that area. This one I chose because I like the step part of it. Big time. So if I were to cut something like that, it just right there would be nice. Yeah. So that's my thought process with the wood. I'm going to assume the cane is heated up. 
and I don't know if we'll get it on the first try, so I've got more than one slice up there. All right, sounds great. You got the garage on for the cane, I see. It does. Um, it could possibly not be heated up if you just turn that on, so I could go first if you wanted me to. What oh, do I think? don't care. What do you want? I think maybe instead of causing some treachery, if you pick up the glass when it's not hot enough, you've got it heating at 1,000 degrees over there, but she's going to pick it up, and if it's not quite hot enough, then it's just going to cause problems. It might crack. It might not be perfect, so better to give it a little extra time than rush it. Okay. So I'll go first. I don't want to be Russian. No Russian. I'm Canadian. Oh. <laughs> Jake's kind of sleepy today. I feel like he needs some jokes. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's that kind of day. Um, all, all right, so, so we just got to pull the torch over. What I'm going to do is stemming off of that totally watery ball application that we got going on here. And instead of making a tree, because that was pretty in-depth and pretty delicate, I'm just going to make a water droplet out of this beautiful iridescent, we call it the blue chrome, and I'm going to make a water droplet out of it and then when you iridize it it's the final move so I'm gonna make this long water droplet and put these water droplets on the water droplet around the bottom of it and when you iridize it only the part that's not covered up with the clear is gonna become iridescent so the whole thing will be totally metallic and then under each sphere will be a deep strong blue should look pretty cool so that's what I gotta do I've got that iridescent blue out right here ready to go and let's give it a shot. How does it just normally this go? This guy, you should just take with the corner in like this over the bench so for the So in the background, grab. I hear John Wood working on the saw. One of our shows will have to do some cold working. Yeah, that's always a blast. All right. Tools are so clean. here we go. Hot. I'm doing a long, tall bubble that drops down like a water droplet and then we'll punty it up, we'll put some balls on it, some clear balls, and then punty it up, flip it around, finish off the top of it, and it'll look amazing. All right, you This is something to hang go. on your wall. All you gotta do is put a nail or some kind of dowel into it and just hang it on the wall. It's this cool, crazy thing coming down. Experimental, let's see how it looks. Let's take a gander. So I checked that the pipe is hollow. There's no glass stuck in there. And I'm coming over to the clear tank here. Uh, I don't want to start with copper blue. It would be cool to do on one or the other, but I'm going to experiment with the clear one first. And I'm also not going to go too big. The whole time, up until just now when I went for the gather, I was thinking about this thing being like two feet tall. But maybe I should just chill out a little bit. Yeah, that was the problem. Yeah, always better to start smaller and work through it. Yeah, that was the problem with the tree. I just went for the largest piece of cane and it was just wild and all over the place and I couldn't figure it out, so. The, um, when you start smaller, you could do like five small pieces versus one large piece. Right. You know what I mean? So you can have five pieces. It leaves pieces room for one. a little bit of trial and error. So there's two layers of that iridescent blue. Now I'm going to heat this thing up and go for a couple more. I want it to be real prominent. Hey, so Zach real doesn't rich. know. Zach doesn't know this. We think we had one of our videos go viral. Yeah, I think we got, what, like 18 million views on it or something? Well, 12. 12? 12. 12 million views. Still Is pretty that good. considered viral? I don't know, folks. How do you define viral out there? It was a sweet video of us making our pumpkins, put pumpkin the stems stem on, on there. Our pumpkin. I, it's so cool. So there's, of course, a ton of spam that hits the page. Right. But it's like all these foreign languages, and it's so cool. It's like, wow, yeah. we've got followers now over here. It is pretty cool. Yeah. The trick so. is getting that to translate into actual engagement in our yeah. business. That's just what Michelle's. Amazing this is. <laughs> That's what my mission is. That's right. And it's a good thing we do something like this show because then we get to blow some glass. So here we go. I got all the color on there. I'm popping a bubble into it. I'm leaving it really thick on the bottom because I want it to drop out like a teardrop. And when I keep blowing air into it, if it's thicker on the bottom, it'll blow out into the thick part on the bottom instead of blowing out just the regular side on there. 
Are you that makes a much sense. Nah, I don't really think I'm gonna need a bench blow. Okay. I'm just gonna slowly let it go. As soon as it, if it dislodges, sometimes you feel the heat just give way and it'll just drop out all the way and just go crazy. So I gotta be right on the edge of letting it get too long. I think that's about the length I want. Once I can flip it around after breaking it off here, I'll be able to pull this out thinner and make it into that raindrop, possibly give it a little loop to hang on. Now I'm just going to heat up the very bottom and blow it out so it's a nice kind of teardrop shape. I like like doing the slugs, the way the slugs come off the pipe. There's like things you learn. Totally, that, every day. Yeah, it pushes you into something else. That's what's nice when it's not the same product. Mm -hmm. To rotate product up. What I'm wondering for the placement of the spheres is if I want to have it be some sort of design pattern or... Or if I want to have it be completely sporadic. So I wonder if you can be sporadic or if your instinct's going to kick in to be like, That's it's got to be symmetrical. It's got to hang right. <laughs> it happens. So when you say your spheres or your globes, give me a size. Ping pong ball, smaller, bigger? Oh, uh, a little smaller than a ping pong ball. Okay. And same That's pipe or fresh pipe every time? Uh, fresh gather every time. Fresh pipe. Yeah. I mean, we could probably do multiples. They don't need to be super juicy from the hole because that's when they fall down and squish down a little bit. I like them sticking off a little bit. Let's do it. Okay. So you see that beautiful deep blue. Probably could have done two or three more coats so it wasn't transparent, but when it becomes iridescent at the very end, then it'll be uh, non-transparent. For sure. Hope everyone's having a beautiful day out there. It's a beautiful day here at the shop. Hold on one sec. Yeah, I think we can just heat that up and use that again. Hmm, I did forget I wanted one flat side on it. So we'll put a couple spheres on now, heat it up and just flatten the one side of it. So to keep this fresh, I did not marber it. Would you like me to marber it? Um, Hold it a yeah, just give it a cylinder shape and then we'll heat it up again. That'll be the flat side. That sphere is still moving, so I'm moving my piece according. But I am going to want them all leaning down a little bit, like they're dripping down from the wall. So i got to keep that in mind. That's awesome. Probably get one more off of this guy. Okay. I'm going to try and give them a little bit different size on each one, too. It's kind of funny because we're talking out loud through what we normally would kind of keep in our head. I'm getting pretty good at it. The Renaissance Festival, too, just like brainstorming when people don't want to ask questions. Like, what oh, am I seeing? About... What am I thinking? Right. But this especially, when no one's standing there asking us questions, we're just like letting it happen. It's what are we talking like about what's on my brain? seeing the thought bubble above your head. Yeah. All right, take a freshie. Start it now or give you a minute? Give me one sec.
I'd like them to get a little bit smaller as we go up the side of it. So a little less glass? Yeah. Here's the flattening I'm going for. I'm going to do it a little off center. So that's the side that'll be on the wall like that. beautiful sound. I don't know if it transfers through the mic, but every time you cut the glass like that, it's, it's like almost butter. like a click. It's like you cut it all the way down to the tiniest little point and it's like click, snap. It's really satisfying. Hey, Survivor started, you know that. Yeah, anybody watch Survivor out there, CBC? I guess it started last week, so we watched the first one. Interesting. Something's going on. That's cool. Brush pipe. I'll take one more small one off that. We're gonna start getting smaller and smaller. Every time I torch it like this, I'm going for every part that the metal of the tool touched. I should say, Zach, in this process, if you have questions, shout them out. That's true. Because if you have questions, maybe the viewers do. Zach, for everyone who's new, is our trusty cameraman. How come you have two friends named Zach? It's not the Zach that was with us before. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that. It's like, it's so weird how that happens. When I was visiting Lucy, there was someone that walked in the store and the store owner was like, Keep it going. Hey, Michelle, how's it going? <laughs> and I was like, how did he know my name? That's really weird. That's awesome. That's some small town business right there. So I'm curious to see, and what I'm already seeing is that the blue is such a soft color, it melts so easily, I'll take one more off this guy, that it's already losing or, or having its shape altered by each individual droplet put on Nugget. here. So what I'm curious to see is when I, before I go for the punny, I'm going to get the whole thing hot and let it drip out a little bit, fall down. So how is it going to pull the blue? shape underneath when I get everything hot enough to move and it's gonna fall be down. really cool it will get some I think it's in. gonna have some like motion to it yep. one more that size will probably get five or six off of it and it should be perfect Okay, give you a minute or start it up. Start it up. And I do want to say I loved reading folks' comments from the last show. I had a long car ride and I just went in there and watched a little bit of the show and was just reading into the comments. And it was really cool seeing how you guys were all bouncing ideas off each other. Zach, feel free to walk around too if you like. In terms of, you know, which way we're moving, you can jump in at different angles if you want. I mean, it's just really cool because the idea of what we're doing is to show people glass and let the world know what's going on with glass. And when I saw some of the words everyone was using and the conversations they were having back and forth about different ideas that could happen, that's what it's all about. And that was really sweet to see. I see exactly where this sweetie's going.
This is when we. Uh, this is when I think of all the things we need catching up on. Like we didn't do our spring cleaning this summer, so maybe we do it in the winter. What, at the house or here? Here, just we always go through in the summer and do like a super shop cleanup and toss extra stuff, rearrange. If anybody's new, holler in the comments that you're new. It's pretty cool to see how people join us and where you're from. We love seeing where people are watching from. Yeah, what's well, been really Take cool. One more. That. one more? Yeah. Uh, it's to see because the time zones are different. Yeah. So you could just be getting up and starting your day, or you could be winding down. We're on the East Coast, Eastern Standard Time. We're in Michigan. So California's three hours in front of us. And we're working Kinda. with molten glass. And this stuff cools down super fast, so it's, uh, I gotta take one more off of this. You want so, it in a row or no? Uh, no, just one more like that's perfect. Um, it's really important that I'm taking these flashes in between doing these. I'll just take that one. Unless it's a quick one like this, because the glass is always in a super fast, perpetual state of cooling. So my blue body here and all these ones down here are rock solid, glass solid, and they're always cooling down. And if I stay too long out of the heat, then I'm going to lose the integrity of what I got and it'll crack and it'll fall apart. So now I've got some really cool action here. You see that pink no, tone no, no, no. to the glass. You can tell those are hotter than the top ones. Because of the color. And it's kind of cool. It so, looks like, like a back massager or something. It's got all those bumps in it. Or something that belongs in the ocean. But I'm going to give it a superheat now and hang it down and just see kind of how these spheres fall out. Then we'll put a Maurice on the bottom, a clear one, and punny it up on a large punny. The no, blue doesn't take a lot of heat. The blue, honestly, look at this, heats up quicker than does the clear. But look at the color change. So if we had the compressed air on as well, you could compress air the blue part so that the dots got hot, Perhaps. right? And then it would stretch. Yeah. I'm just going to give it two or three more quick heats like this. telling us if Jake is a good dancer, how fast he can get those moves in. This thing's pretty wild. I don't know if I'm gonna get the, the clear hot enough to let it flow in the any direction. The blue would have to be, I think, thicker. What? The blue would have yeah, to be thicker. Yeah, I think you're right. It's thin and it's blue. So it's having problems. It's having problems, is that what you said? Yeah, it's having problems. <laughs> so interesting how the human mind wants to relate it to something. It's a club. It's a musical instrument. Like, yeah. Right? Doesn't it look like you could play it? Do, 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 do. Totally. It's a lot of keys. It is. It is a lot of keys. Maybe that's the name of the piece. A Many keys. keys. How about that, uh, Maurice? Okay. So now we got to flip it around. I, I like how the bottom's shaped up here. It's interesting. Um, but I got to put something here so I'm not connecting a rod to the blue and breaking off a bit of blue. So we're going to just do a clear little piece on the bottom, stick another rod here, break it off, and then finish, pull out, and finish the top of it. It's very uh, interesting. Very, very interesting. So watch this move. One might call that a platform. A stage. A stage for this next application of goodness. Oh man, it's cool. It the however it worked, and that's some kind of physics, but when I hung this out and didn't hold the air in the pipe. 
it shrunk on three different sides. So it's a three faceted, it kind of became triangular in the way that it was falling out. Now I don't know, we could ask Mr. Rob about that, Zach and I's old physics teacher, but uh, he might not know either, he was a little crazy. Hope you're out there, Mr. Rob. Uh, but here we go. So we stick it right on there. It's pretty much on center. It's a pretty funky form, so to find where directly center is isn't as important as long as it's turning smooth. I think it's perfect. That is exactly what I'm talking about. A little bit of agua here, a little bit of tappage. That's off there. It's honestly kind of a cool vase, like if that thing was wide enough and flat enough on the bottom to uh, hold itself up. It's kind of interesting. I think this is a good example of like why things need to be drawn out or thought about. When you're a student in glass blowing, you go to make stuff. You go to make stuff. And um, what happens is a, as a student, you're learning the material and you don't quite understand. So you start making something and then you're like, oh my God, it's this. That's exactly what I had in mind when really it wasn't at all. Right. Um, that's that, kind of what we're doing. Yeah. But it would be cool to draw some things up. Maybe that could be part of the show. Yeah. And also, I think when you work for other studios, when you're learning, it's important because you see things in the glass like, oh, what would happen if I did this? Or this is really cool. And then you define your style. I think it's difficult for someone to go from college just to make their stuff. Yeah. Agreed. So I'm not going to be, what I'm doing is I'm figuring it out. Uh, no, I was going to trim it, but I've got those balls up higher than I was thinking. So what I'm going to do is kind of the way you did those vases back in the day. And the vase that's on my arm here is grab this top part here and pull it up really tall. So I stretch out everything that's going on here. Unless, of course, it does that. I'll just hold on to it for a sec. Thank you. Wow. That'll wake you up. Holy moly. How did that happen? It went on so hot. So now maybe pull it out and cut it at an angle. It's no entry. It doesn't have a hole for exit air. I think it's still open now. All right. See what you got. Let's just see what we can do with this. <laughs> That's pretty crazy, folks. And I like that it's an experimental show because it gives us this freedom to be like, okay, now what? <laughs> <laughs> you said you were going to hang it, so does it need an opening? I'm, no, it doesn't. I'm going to try and loop it around, give it a hook. your punny again. So blue is one of the easiest colors to understand the heat ratio. Um, so not actually a bad idea when experimenting. Right. Keeps you on your toes to remember. Going back into the heat there, the edge just smoothed right out. Nice. And so well, if you want it to hang, do you need to bend it? No, I really uh, don't like it at all. <laughs> and I don't think it's going to hang. But it's going to be a cool example of the color here in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Not really what I was envisioning. That's why we say it's an experimental show. And much bigger than I was thinking, too. Oh, seriously? Yeah. All right. Should have just not blown it out so much. Now we know. 
All right, how about a reduction? Because that's what we're going to show off here. We're going to do reduction? Yeah. On the, the blue? Oh, yeah. It's the blue chrome. And then all under all the spheres is going to be that still blue while this becomes completely iridescent. A little less. Thank you. Bada bing. See how those are deep blue underneath them, everything else iridescent. Let's do one more on it. And then we'll knock it off. I want I gotta find something that I love with these spheres that's gonna look good. So this is not it, but it's a cool color example. Looks like a warty witch's hat. A warty what? Witch's hat. A little bit of water. Are you going to break it right off in? I'm probably just going to break it right off into the inhaler, yeah. One last look. It looks like something from Harry Potter. It's the wrong one because we don't have the tag switched around. Beautiful. There it is, folks. Pretty interesting. Something to sleep on, something I'm going to have to uh, maybe get a drawing of next week and have uh, a finished thought into what I'm doing with that because that was not it. But it was cool. It was very cool. The, the funny thing about this, too, it's going to be like, ooh, I really like that, or oh. You know, our range of emotion on this show will be that. Big time. I think it will be very interesting. You know, it's like watching the cake shows when, like, the cake doesn't rise or something like that. So Frustrating. I'm sorry. That's all right. Do you want me to do mine or you want to do another yeah, one? Yeah, go for it. I might do another tinier one after you go. You go? Isn't that a car? Hugo. See, folks, this is a nice uh, system. Red is hot, so you know where you're going. Okay, so the kale, unlike the feather, I'm going to do the kale on the punny, then bring me a small wrap to, to stabilize it on the punny. Okay. And then I'm going to start the bits higher up. Okay. And I'm going to use the flat crimps and the leaf crimps to kind of get some movement. Action to it. I would like you to go. I've got a piece of cane for the, the rib. Okay. And for color, what I'd like you to do is go, because you're gonna go alongside and, and walk with me because I might let it get fatter and then taper down, right? Like the bit, so the bit can be not sloppy, but because I'm gonna do all these folds. So go in yellow first, then this, then that. One so coat one each? Dip each, yeah. All you right. could go yellow, dip, 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 and just hold it and then go in this flash it and then that. Okay. Sounds good. So what she said was one schmack, one healer, and one schmack. Which means the schmack is a coat, folks, so we're going to do a coat of yellow. A healer is when you put that layer of glass on there and then just wait a second for that first thin layer to melt in. So then you go right into this before heating it. It only picks up like a half coat. And that totally depends on all the different colors. Blues, you go in, you go to the next color, you get a full coat because blues are so soft, they melt in so easy. You go into an orange and then go for a healer of another color, you're going to get a lot less than you would if you were with blue because oranges take forever to melt. So that's just something that she understands when she says put a healer on there. It's green and yellow. They should melt in pretty good. And here we go. She's picking up a piece of cane, nice long piece. White, looks like white and green or just yeah, white? Yeah, white and green. White and green. Kind of uh, kale stem style. It's as Italian it be. kale. Okay, will you bring me a bit for this part right here? Right. So 
I'm bringing over some clear. This is a stabilizer. Holy. It stabilized it so much that the cane just popped right off. Nice. And there it is, folks. Dun dun! Round two. Round two. So that's what happened. She went for the gather there, or she had it on there, and then we put a bunch of clear glass, and that cane wasn't completely heated yet. So all that extra hot clear shocked Could it you throw up and gave it a breaking it? point. Then she went Ooh, for more heat and the change in temperature cracked it right at the end of where all that new clear had been added. Oh, perfect. That's pretty interesting. That's the stuff you got to learn with. That's trial and error. That's glass blowing. That piece of cane, can't really put a number on how much that costs, but yeah, it's the time and it's everything it's else that's you. part of what we do is experimenting with glass. So she's going in for another one. This one, she may leave a little more glass on the end of the pipe so it holds it a little bit stronger. You want it hot enough that it'll stick to the glass, but okay, so once it's on there, it's moving, so it takes a second to stabilize. Oh, I was talking, sorry. Um, about half the time. Okay. Ready for it? Yep. A little smaller, a little more controlled. Very nice. down but that's okay so I'm starting about here about three to four inches up and doing it from there okay so, so the green so, mitt yep this is the for the full side correct yep so I gotta think about and that's gonna be enough yeah so watch how I put this color on here Go in here, nice and hot, tap it and turn it, it picks up a full layer of the yellow on it. Okay. Then I just give it a second, while I'm doing that I'll shape it up a little bit, pull it off the pipe, but now it's melting in. Now I go into here and look at, it's a nice half coat, a spotted coat of that deep green. Perfect. Then I gotta melt it in. And now I'll go for a nice layer of the emerald green right on top. So I gotta time this right because the glass Jake's gonna bring over is gonna be hot, hot, hot. And it will heat up this part very quickly. Let's have this pot of started. I wonder if it's almost better to layer it, at least put like another bit on the thicker part instead of doing it all in one. We'll Let's see. see how it goes. Here it comes. Okay, it doesn't have to be super hot, please. <laughs> I said three to four inches down. Fat, fat, fat. Thinner. Yeah. So, crimping, curly, curly, nice. curly. And then here's a little more ruffly. Yeah. And I can spin Ooh. that up. Look at that. That's pretty kale-like. All right, next bit, same thing. 
Cheers. So now the trick is, I have to heat it enough to keep it warm. Not so hot I lose the shape. And I also don't want to lose the pattern <laughs> from the tool <laughs> while Jake makes this next one. So he's hustling over there because I want similar temperatures. So I noticed that I had a little bit of glass left over, so I went for just a hair smaller. Don't want to change it too drastically because she's going for the same motion on her second one to make it identical, but I do have a little less glass than last time so that it's a little more controllable. And I've got orange in the top, but I want to get some color back in my punny here. I'm going to do one flash before you come over. All right. <laughs> Anybody out there seen the show Squid Game on Netflix? What's it called? Squid Game. I can't really go into detail no, about it right please, now. No, not right now. <laughs> but it's pretty hardcore. So I let it slump a little. Yeah. That's right. Leaf tool, leaf tool, leaf tool. Wiggly leaf tool. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, that's so cool. So what I don't know is the color yet. If the color is where I want to be. Yeah, we won't know. It's going to brighten up a lot more. Oh yeah, I'm uh, not worried. It looks like green kale right now. I'm totally fine with it. It, uh, yeah, the colors you just don't know while they're hot. But I think that is one cool looking piece. Really cool. I agree. It just went on super clean. Not over till it's over. Left a little for the stem there. That's awesome. You wanna take the pick the kale next to me? Let's just take a look. Let's do a little comparison here, folks. I'm just evening out the, the heat right now. What? Go for oh, it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's all like burnt kale. <laughs> That's pretty similar, though. Pretty darn close. That was oh, almost some kale treachery. I was going to do water droplets on it, but I'm too nervous with this stem. I think it looks pretty darn good without them. Yeah. OK, so. They have to be pretty tiny, too. Do you want to use the torch on the bottom if I break it off yeah. right there? Yeah, I do. Okay. And then we'll put it on a paddle and we'll slide it away. Mm. Woo wee, how fun. Make sure it's sticking off the end so I can torch it, yep. Nice. Uh, Nice. So then I'm going to torch this so there's no sharp edges and it kind of beads up. Do you want to like flatten it with the no, knife I, at no. all? Like that would be like as soon as it's rounded. Just a little up. like. No. Psh. Okay. That's what it would break like if it were a piece of kale. All right. It's her piece. There it is. Right side, left side? Either. Very nice. Thanks. That's super cool. Whoa, what's going on over here? <laughs> Copper blue action. Okay, is that it for today's show? Oh, uh, I think that is. We got a lot going on today, and we're training the new guy, folks. Oh, the new guy. If you guys uh, have seen our other shows or you follow what we do around here, we've got a lot going on right now, and this is a beautiful opportunity to use our brains in a creative way. Everything's creative, though, but uh, we're going to be making some simple glass today, glass we need, but I'm going to be training up a new glass blower for us uh, to be an assistant, similar to Marcy, and he's going to be awesome. He's 
joined the team. And so his name's Brandon, folks. If you Hands put any comments out there, send him some love. <laughs> but uh, it's going to be it. We're going to see how it goes. Next week, I'm going to try and draw something up because I want to have a little more uh, idea of the scale of what I'm doing and have it thought out a little more. Because I did like the idea, but the scale is what really messed with it. Having it large, I blew it out too thin. And so I'm going to be giving that another try. But I love the way the color worked for sure. Okay, so on the back end, Jake is going to turn off the tech. That's so right, you, folks. So we can follow out with uh, Chris blowing. All right, well, everybody enjoy their week. You guys tune in Sunday for the annealer reveal. So we're going to show off these products and Tuesday's products and have pieces for sale on the website. So join us on Facebook and YouTube and enjoy the rest of this beautiful Thursday.